Let's take a look at an app that's available on Android devices. It's called uh, GPS Test, all one word. And it's an open source app that allows you to take a look at uh, how your GPS is working on your local device. Now the cool thing is, first of all, it has this status view. And the status view shows you everything that is being received by your device. And so this is a good way to determine if your device can actually receive the L5 channel, that uh, bonus channel. And it also shows you what constellations your device can receive. So in this case, this Android Pixel 6 can receive the American Navstar, the Russian uh, GLONASS, as well as the European Galileo systems. But it can also get the L5 channel, which is a bonus because you can get a little bit better accuracy using that. So this shows you a few pieces of information about each, and there's a whole bunch of documentation associated with this app that you uh, can uh, dive into. Um, unfortunately, it is only available for Android devices. I believe they are trying to make an Apple-based device uh, app as well. But let's just take a look at some of the cool features in this. Now, this alone is great information just to understand what your device can actually receive, what the chip on the, this phone can actually get. But the second thing it can do is it can show you a map of the location, and you can see here I'm parked right beside this building. And I'm parked here on purpose to be able to get a blind spot because GPS signals all work in line of sight. So if it can't see the satellite directly, it's not going to be uh, received properly on the device and it can't be used in the calculations. The next thing it has is this sky view and pretty much every GPS has this sky view. But this is a lot of really good information that you need to take a look at to understand how your device is working. So if you have access even just to this view, you can understand what's going on. Now in particular, we know that building's behind me and the way the, the GPS is uh, showing it, you can see um, if I was laying down on the ground that uh, the, the center of the crosshair in the circle would be where my position is. And if I'm looking up, um, I would see where all of the different satellites are. And in this case, I can actually see that uh, 30 and 13, it's getting a little hint of information from those satellites, but it's not able to connect to them. Um, the dark outline in this in this case it determines which satellites are being used as the uh, the dark outline or sorry as uh, as part of the calculation. So it's not able to get a full uh, amount of information from those to be able to uh, to to use them in the calculations. Um, it also shows you if you're using any of the um, SBAS type connections, and uh, we can actually see that back here as well. If we go back to status view, you can see satellite back, uh, based augment. Has, uh, is not available on uh, this device. It's not actually seeing those right now. Uh, let's go back to Skyview. Um, so they're not being used and we could actually try to get to a better position to, to make those work if we needed to. But the coolest part of this app is probably the accuracy side of things. Now I've already gone in here and put the position I'm currently parked in, this parking spot. And that way um, it knows where I am exactly based on the aerial imagery and of course the aerial imagery might be off but the nice thing about being in a parking space is I know with all the lines how many lines over I am so I can actually get a pretty accurate positioning uh, using the aerial image and you can see how it's squiggling around the actual area it uh, it kind of floats and when you first connect to any GPS it uh, um, it needs some time to get better accuracy. And in this case, you can actually see how it's getting a little bit better because of that uh, time that I've given it in, in discussing this. And so you can see the average after almost 240 um, fixes, it's about 0.78 meters off. That's pretty accurate if you actually consider. So this GPS, just in this device, it's not even using any correction off satellites, it's not using SBAS, and it's able to get really, really high accuracy, and that's because it's using the L5 channel, L1 channel combined, as well as multiple constellations. But is it always that accurate? And you can see what's going on with the actual devices, how it's moving um, the, the, the line, it's moving around. So sometimes it, it can be not that accurate. And how do you know when it is accurate versus when it isn't? Um, well, this device tries to help you with that. There's this graph here as it takes every single point. It does the measurement to try to determine what 
um, level of accuracy we're dealing with. So in the horizontal accuracy here, you can see um, we're getting really, really accurate on the measured error. And that measured error is based on that point I placed on the map. The accuracy estimated by the hardware, or by the GPS chip itself, basically the Android device just provides that. There's no way to know what's used in the calculation. So when you see those little accuracy errors, um, like 5 meter, 7 meter, 10 meter on your device, it's really an estimate. It could be bang on, it could be completely off. It doesn't really um, say clearly what the actual error is. The only way to figure that out is to actually go place your GPS on a known point and then you can actually calculate the error. But that's not the point of using a GPS. You're trying to get as accurate a position as possible. So you need to use that with a grain of salt. Um, but knowing that those techniques are, uh, are what really helps. So the first technique is letting your GPS soak. So let the actual signal uh, solidify. Let it give it some time to figure out where it is. It'll, it'll come to a, a better location. The second one is average. Averaging the number of points, you can see here, after uh, almost three, 400 uh, fixes, we're, we're, we're hovering around 0.8. If I do this on a new point, we would actually find that it would be well off if we just took one point. So this is averaging many, fi uh, many points. And you can see how the point, the GPS point itself, that little blue dot on the map currently, hovers around, it kind of moves around. And so sometimes it'll be off over here, sometimes it'll be over, off over there, but the, uh, because of the way the signals work and because of the way the atmosphere is constantly fluctuating, the average should represent a pretty good location. So pretty cool. The second thing to note is the GPS um, error that's being told by the chip isn't necessarily correct. So you can actually see the blue circle around the little blue circle. So there's a little bright blue circle and then there's the big blue circle. The big blue circle is actually trying to communicate what type of error the GPS chip is providing you. And it's much larger, obviously, than my calculated error on, the, on here. You can see the difference between the two. So you can understand how to start getting better accurate positioning simply by understanding these little tips. So this app, it's pretty cool. Um, definitely uh, something that I would use.